you know, I ended up le leading the team in touchdowns, um, ended up getting invited to the NFL Combine and getting drafted by the Chargers. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Never Settle Mindcast. Uh, very special guest today. We made extra sure that this one's gonna come out fire. We checked all the equipment, made a list, checked it twice. My guest today is Legadu Nane. This guy is an accomplished NFL wide receiver for the Chargers, the Carolina Panthers, Miami Dolphins. He's gone on to continue to develop his career, opened a number of businesses, five different locations here in San Diego County. Uh, his most recent project being Game Elevated and focusing on the development of athletes to help them reach their potential. And again, good personal friend of mine. It's been fun to watch his journey both through the league and then after the league. And I remember when it started before we even met was the classic Fiesta Bowl, 2006, 2007, 13-0, Boise State Broncos taken down Oklahoma. Wild game, wild ending. Um, Without any further ado, Mr. Legadunane, welcome. Thanks for having me, man. Hey, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. Um, let's let's dive right in. Uh, this mindcast focuses on mindset patterns, um, routines, habits that separate those individuals from where they're at to where they want to go, and specifically people who are good and people who, like yourself, become elite. And I know the journey wasn't perfect but it ended where it needed to go because of your goal. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background um, and, and when you decided how you developed at Boise State to go there and transition into the league. Sure. Um, I'm from Portland, Oregon. Um, and from the time I can remember, I wanted to be a pro athlete. You know, mm -hmm. um, at first it was, you know, I was inspired by Dion, so I wanted to be a pro baseball player, pro football player, be a dual sport. Um, and then at different points in time through my journey, you know, I had a favorite sport. So at times it was, you know, NBA. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'd say probably once I got to high school, uh, my sophomore year is when, you know, football obviously being a fall sport, I started getting the recruiting letters um, my sophomore year. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go all in here. This is where I'm going to focus, spend my time. Um, obviously with basketball, I, you only grow to so, certain, certain height and yeah. I was kind of a wing player. So that kind of wasn't my route. Um, <laughs> but baseball at that time was my passion, but because I saw that direct line to kind of my dream of what I wanted to do, that being the track, I really locked into football at that time. Um, at the time I played, um, I was a quarterback and safety. So a lot of my recruiting was as an athlete, there were some schools that recruited me only as a quarterback some athletes that, or some schools that recruited me as, you know, we'll get you here and we'll figure it out, oh, yeah. you know? And so, um, choosing my school, I knew I wanted to go to a school that I was going to play quarterback at because that was my passion. So I chose to go to Boise state. And, um, when I was there, they recruited another player in my same year. So there was two guys in the same class. And then they had a junior at the time who was a high level player. Um, mm -hmm and could ball, you know, he was just cold blooded. So there was so much you could learn from him, you know, behind the scenes and the way he worked and the way he thought and the way that he like had that, that killer instinct. And, but like at this time, Boise's program was developing. So they were starting to, to recruit a, a different caliber of athletes. So like this guy can ball, but he's not an athlete, you know, yeah. and then he's got these two young bulls that are athletic, you know, athletic freaks that are going to be competing for the spot and you know like just by the timing of things he's a junior he knows in next or ne his next season is his last season and we know that okay in two years we're competing for this thing yeah so um that's kind of my journey getting to boise state and then um as far as like my journey while i was there um do you want me to dive into that or absolutely i mean i think it's the natural segue because you get to boise state you're committed you had to narrow it down you had to narrow your focus from baseball and basketball then to baseball and football being your passion but like most athletes you know that are big or elite in their local field that are going to the next level you you're the best athlete so the coaches want to get you in everywhere right, right. so you're playing two-way ball i'm no professional athlete i always wanted to be I, it's something we've talked about but i played two-way ball so you had to then pick and choose okay what do i like better do i like being a quarterback or do i like hanging back there and pickle people off and 
taking some helmets home, you right. know? So you right. made that switch. And the picture behind you, clearly, when you're in the league, you're a wide receiver, right? right. So let's talk about the growth that went on from a physical mindset standpoint while at Boise State, because, you know, how'd you, when did you get your opportunity to play quarterback at Boise? Yeah, so um, my freshman year, basically, we're competing from day one, right? We're kind of trying to jockey for position, even though we're not competing for the starting position as far as who's going to be the guy, but we're trying to, like, we're measuring each other up every single day from, oh, yeah. from the jump. And we're both, we both happen to be from Oregon. You know, we competed in the Oregon, um, the Oregon All-Star Game before we reported to, to campus. So we had already met. We kind of already knew what each other brought to the I table. See you. you. know, so then when we get there, it's like, okay, we already know it's game on. Like, this is mm -hmm. coming to play. And he's thinking the same thing. So coming in day one, that's kind of the mindset. Um, and then as kind of time went on, you know, the, finally the starting position's open. And so at that time, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do everything I can to, to, to win this opportunity, right? Yep. I'm going to go all in on, on the things that I can do. And so prior to getting to that, that moment right there that we're about to go into, um, during my freshman, my retro freshman year, my freshman year, a lot of times because we're jockeying for position, you're looking for the coach to kind of like, who, okay, well, who's coach feeling? Okay, well, these reps don't matter, but who's he, who's he pushing in first? So you're looking yeah. at all these things that you can't control and you're kind of bringing it into your everyday action, mm -hmm. you know? And so I've kind of, I, rec I kind of recognized that my, after my red shirt year, like, okay, look, I need to get focused on what I can do because obviously like focusing on who he's feeling or what's going on. It's like, I'm not playing, now I'm not playing at my, my highest level. I'm not, I'm not doing what I can do. No, you're I'm distracted. still, yeah, I'm distracted. Exactly. And, and you may be, be, and you, and I don't mean to cut you off, but you, as an athlete, I'm happy to hear that because I, I know I went through that times and you're beating yourself up completely unnecessarily based on something that you can't control. That's then throwing you off from being your best self. Right. 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 So you, you realize you got to tune that out and focus on what you can control. Right. Yeah. So, so as I kind of get that focus, um, that's the time that we're, we're competing for the starting spot. So it's myself, Jared, who's in my class, and then there was a, a guy that was a year older than us that it was a three-way kind of, kind of um, quarterback battle. And so um, being locked in on controlling what I can, could control, that's kind, of the, that's kind of the mantra I had for myself. You mm -hmm. know, like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on what I can control, and I'm going to be, be the best that I absolutely can. That's like... After being distracted, like that's the process I pared it down to. Focus on what I control, be the best player I can. When I get my opportunity, I'm on the ball. That's, that's where I was at mentally. And so going through spring ball, we're competing for the spot. The coaches kind of tell us we're, we're, we're going to decide. We're, at this time, we're neck and neck, all three of us. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, the coaches are like, okay, look, we're looking for the guy that has these numbers, QBR, QB percentage, interceptions, um, touchdowns everything that you can as far as measuring a quarterback, we're going to look for the guy who's leading the chart there and we're going to let the numbers speak. Okay. Right. So I'm like, okay, that's the target. This is what I'm dialed in on. We go through spring ball. I'm leading the charts I, at the completion of spring ball. I'm at the top of the charts in all of those categories. And you know, we have the, our kind of our, our spring e evals or, or final meetings. And so I'm going into that meeting thinking, okay, I'm about to be the guy or it's like, okay, you and this guy, because there's it, it three of us at the time. Yeah. So it's been, okay, you and this guy are going to be competing for number one reps in fall camp. I'm, that's what I'm expecting to hear. Yeah, why as not? I'm, as I'm going into these meetings. So I go in and, you know, he. <sighs> Did he give you, it's not you, it's me? Did he give you one of those? I just can't put my finger on it. You know, <laughs> I just, I, I didn't have an exact reason why I wasn't not only the guy, but I wasn't going to be the backup. I was going to be third on the depth chart. Right. Okay. So like leaving that meeting, I was just so like cheated is how you feel. Oh, yeah. you know, like obviously if you if, if in any position you feel like, you know, you deserve it or whatever like that, you're going to feel that. But it was like at this time, like I'm having people on the team like, OK, yeah, you won that or telling me like, you know, so I'm yeah. like, OK, I'm the guy I'm, I'm feeling like it. I know that I'm playing like it. I know that I'm like having that confidence and like how your teammates are vibing off of you or is a huge indicator. Like you can think you're the guy, but if everybody in the locker rooms huddled up around somebody else, you know, that clearly is an indicator. You're probably not the guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so at the time, you know, like I'm feeling like, okay, it, it's probably still a competition and it's always a competition. You know, it's never like, even if that point I'd have been named the guy, it wouldn't have been like, whew, okay. 
I'm the guy, so yep. it's good now. No, so Relax. like, so going from that point, it's like, okay, I'm third on the depth chart. Now I'm a sophomore in college and I want to go to the league. So I'm like, okay, I'm third on the depth chart. I have no film. There's no way for anybody to see what I can do. I can be raved about by every teammate that I have. The coaches can love me all day. I can have all these highlights in practice, but it's like, if it doesn't matter, so, so I'm like, that's what's going through my head. I'm like, okay, so do I need to transfer? I mean, like, are these coaches screwing me over? Like, you know, I'm thinking these Seems things like, okay, like, right. like, what do I need to do? Cause it's like, at this point, like I've always been a team guy, but it's like, at this point, it's like, okay, I've been a team guy, but it's like, am I putting myself last? So, you know, I, I lined up a scholarship to go somewhere else. And at this time there wasn't the transfer portal. So you had to either sit out a year or go down a division. So that was something I was like, okay, I don't want to go down a division. I'm building a great team, you know, that eventually got to that Fiesta Bowl game that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing that being built and I'm feeling that and I'm a part of it. These are my guys. So it's like, okay. So I decided to stay and, can, and, and stay true to that promise that I made to be going in all in on being my best and controlling what I can control, you know, and, and, and being ready for my opportunity because they, so Jared, the guy that was in my class ends up being the starting quarterback. So I'm like, so my mindset, I'm a competitor, right? Yeah. So, okay. I'm like, I'm not the guy, but I'm figuring out how I'm going to be the guy. Like, yeah, how are you I'm not him? like, Oh, well, I'm not the guy. No, I'm figuring out how I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be ready. And I'm like, okay, well, Jared's never started a game. There's no guarantee that he's going to go out there and know what he's doing or make a mistake or an injury happen. And I'm in there, you know, like that. And, and that's the other thing, like, you're third on the depth chart, but when bullets are flying, they're going to go to the guy that's going to win the game. Absolutely. So like, I knew I had to be ready and my opportunity would come. So I'm all in on that. I'm like, I'm gonna be ready. And so fast forward, we're week seven into that season and we're undefeated. This is our, our sophomore season. We're undefeated and Jared's balling. He's got confidence. The team believes in him. The coaches believe in him, obviously like we're, we're, we're dominating. And at that point I'm like, okay, what were you doing at that point? What was your role so, during those games? If he's starting, you're on the team, you're suiting up? Oh, no doubt. Yeah, I'm suiting up. Um, I'm doing some special teams, like I'm doing punt punt team. So they had me like PP, we'd run fakes, things like that. Um, and then during the game, I'm doing signals. I'm the guy with the hat yeah. on the side. Did you have a visor or a hat? I've always wondered. Well, really, I had the little little uh, tight top you know okay. the, the yeah little sweat sweat cap but yeah sweat. so like during the game i'm doing the signals or whatever and it just kills you because it's like every day in the practice going to the game you're just like you're the most athletic dude on the team you're walking around here and you're like okay like <laughs> the game is going on you're going home and you're like dang i'm not even playing in these games it's like yeah we're undefeated but you don't feel like you're contributing so it's like yeah i'm, I'm happy for the team but it's like dang i'm not even doing anything you know yep. So um, at the time, I'm, I'm still doing everything that I can to become to, to be ready for my opportunity. So I'm on off days. I'm, I'm watching film in the weight room. I'm doing extra before practice. I'm out there before everybody else. I'm doing extra. At the time, I had got a quarterback who was a, a backup with the Cowboys and worked with him on my off days to dial in because obviously if you're not the guy you're not going to be getting that instruction during practice so i was like okay i need to get somebody around that can tighten me up and so that way i'm still ready and getting that instruction so i was doing that on my off days so it's by week it's seven we're, we're seven and oh i'm in there watching film and a scout from the dolphins comes in and, and he's kind of looking for an open film room and so he introduces himself he asked me who i am and he asked me why don't i play receiver <laughs> And, you know, at the time I responded to him, like I responded to everybody else, you know, I'm a quarterback, yeah. you know, people had asked me to play receiver, to play tight end, to play safety, to play linebacker. It was always something uh, other than quarterback, but I'm like, yeah. okay, but if I'm the best quarterback, why can't I play quarterback? That's how yeah. I'm thinking. So after that conversation, I just kind of remembered that kind of kept running through my head. And I was like, at this time, I'm like, I want to go to the league, right? That's my dream is to get to the league. I, I want it to be, an, I want to be an NFL quarterback, but it's like, really i need to get to the league yeah so i was like i had never even thought to play receiver it was always some other position that i didn't want to play i didn't think of it you know it was always like something being pushed on me so i was like i was never interested but then he like brought this receiver thing and i was like i play receiver i know the plays i would have the cheat code yeah. i'd know all the pre-snap reads it'd be easy i can already catch i can throw it to him i'm catch it you know like 
So it was kind of an easy. So, so the next week I ended up going into coach Peterson's office and I'm like, I want to switch receiver. He's like receiver, you know, and he's got kind of (laughs) that grin on his face. Like finally this kid's coming around and you know, I'm going to get this guy in the game. And so, yeah, I'm like receiver. And so at the time, obviously they have kids from all over the country that they brought in that could ball at receiver. But, um, I was dialed into that same process of, of doing everything that I could to be the best. So at first, I mean, I had to dial in my route running, you know, you have to, you can know how to get open. You know, can know where to be, but it's like, if you can't run the route or if the guy's beating you to the spot because he sees what's happening. So I had to tie all that in and, and get with guys and, and do all that. And so by my senior year, you know, I ended up le- leading the team in touchdowns, um, ended up getting invited to the NFL combine and getting drafted by the chargers. So, um, let me pause the, you there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to pause you there because we're, I sit back as a fan and I listen to your story and I, you know, then as your friend, I get excited and I could just listen. You know what I mean? And I'm getting excited, but I really think to, to give that value, we got to break down a couple of those transitions because they come out in the story because it's your story, but it's important that people who have never played sports may not get it, but as an athlete, your personal identity is so tied to the position you play, mm. right? It's not like, oh, I'm on the football team. It's always the linemen, they're hanging together, you got the backers, you got the DBs, have their little crew thing going on, the wide receivers, everybody, but it's part of your identity, and especially when you're the quarterback, mm-hmm. right? You're the guy, right? You were winning, it's you. You're losing, oh, that guy did it. So to break from that and, and pivot really is what happened. Yeah how it didn't come easy because it took years of people indicating or trying to force you into that position. How, how did you have the confidence to know at a collegiate level, D one school undefeated team who had weapons on the outside that they brought in? How did you know that you were going to be able to pivot, get into a new position and still excel with the goal being the big goal being up here, get to the league and sort of a subcategory being whatever position it was in, right? Mm -hmm. How did you pivot from going quarterback, quarterback, all in quarterback to wide receiver? Well, kind of two part. One, um, I always had that clarity of trying to get to the league. I always had that clarity of getting to the league, not trying to get to the league, Mm -hmm. of getting to the league, right? I always was very clear on that. Like there was no doubt ever about that. And the second part of that is I didn't know that that was going to be my thing, you know, but when I, when I decided not to transfer schools, the one thing that I did know at that time is that if I transferred schools, one, there was no guarantee over there what would be going on, but two, I would always have that. What if I would always wonder, you know? And so like that, when that was a huge swaying factor to keep me to stay, like I would always wonder. And so at this point in time, when I decided to switch to receiver, I was already so dialed in on what I had to do to become my best player. Like if I maxed out my ceiling at quarterback, it's like, okay, well then I have a new ceiling at receiver, Yeah, you know, and I don't know what that ceiling is yet. And so I'm going to find it though. And yeah. so like when I switched over, I just went all in on trying to find that ceiling. And the thing was, was in being in a, being a quarterback, like you hit on, you're the guy, right? You are yeah. the guy that's motivating the team. You're the guy that's setting the temperature in the room right? When you walk in the room, if guys aren't doing the things that they need to be doing, you can come in and just mold to the temperature or you can set the tempo and and raise the standard. So you're that kind of leader on your team. And so when I made that pivot to receiver, the cool thing about it was I was kind of think I was kind of uh, that identity thing was kind of something that that I struggled with. But the cool thing about it was when I switched, guys still saw me in that light. Yeah. Guy still respected me in that manner. The guy what that was the guy respected me in that manner. You know what I mean? So it was like, now I'm a receiver, but it's like guys are still coming to me. And it's like when I speak, people listen, whether it's a player or a coach. You know, like I'm on the field and I'm seeing things. I'm like and I'm seeing things not only for me to eat, but I'm seeing things that like, no, this is what we need to do to win. And that's what people always knew about me was like and I always felt like, like I was so clear on getting, I was going to get to the league. I wasn't worried about getting mine. I was just worried about us winning. Like I want to win. And so because that was my mindset and that's how I operated, you know, when I, when I switched p- positions, obviously that was something that was in my favor, but then other people wanted to help me win because I'd always been helping other people win. So 
that's like what gave me confidence to keep going because I didn't know that I, that was the right move. But like when I when I switch positions, you know, obviously you see those you get those little glimpses like, OK, this feels good. Like, oh, OK, I'm on the right track. But then obviously there's a lot of work you have to do. And it's not now I'm like, OK, I want to get to the league. Like, it's great that I'm better than these four guys on my team. But it's like we're the top 10 guys in the country. Where am I at compared to that? So like my bar was always comparing myself to something. I wasn't comparing myself to my peers. I always knew where I was going. So I was comparing myself to that field. Yeah. Whoever, whoever the elite was at your level or the next level where you're going right. to the pros. Right? right. And so you get to the pros, you've, your work ethics been set, continues to develop your mental game strong. One of the biggest things you identified as your sophomore year when you, when you tuned out the noise, mm-hmm. and people don't understand what that means, but you hit the nail on the head where you just don't listen to the naysayers or pay attention to things you can't control. And you invested it in yourself. Like I can get up earlier. I can stay later. I can do more reps and you get, now you get to the league and you get that huge draft day call. You're in the league. What was, what did you realize when you got to the league? Like what were the differences on the professional level than those players that you had won on the biggest stage, right? A memorable game will go down in history. I think easily is the greatest Fiesta Bowl, right? Yeah. Wildest game. You've performed elite level. What were the differences you noticed um, amongst the people in the NFL once you got there? The biggest difference I noticed was that it was a mindset game, Mm -hmm. right? Um, You know, everybody's played sports at some point or has been exposed to it. And so like as an athlete, obviously you always kind of imagine like, what's it like? Like out there, like, how big is he really? How fast are these dudes really? Mm-hmm. Like, I can ball. Like, so like, I always wondered, okay, well, when I get there, now it's like, okay, my feet are on the same soil, right? And I'm looking around, you know, you kind of looking around, and I'm like, everybody's the same size. These are, some dudes are small. You have a couple guys that are just physical freaks or, you know, whatever it is, but there's a couple guys. But you're looking around and you're like, okay. And then as practice starts, the tempo and the level that everybody operates at, is at another level like the norm is at another level and so it's one thing that i quickly identified with because you know when when you have that quarterback i kind of background you're you're usually the guy that's pushing that so when i saw that i'm like okay it's not the quarterback pulling anybody it's like no no no. these guys are moving themselves like and it's like it's just a different level so um that's the first thing that i really really notice is like Things are happening during a play. Things are happening at the end of a play that happened that were already broken down and executed before the ball was snapped on every play. And in practice, you're seeing it. You're seeing these dudes that you're like, how is this old dude beating me to the spot? And yeah. then you start to see the game and you start to see like how like these dudes aren't going home after the workout, after the cold tub, after the training room. No, no, no. They're going back in and getting filmed. These dudes aren't rolling in here at eight when it's the eight thirty special teams meetings. These dudes have been here since six. Yeah. Like year two, year three in my career, our our quarterback and our center were were racing to the facility in the morning to see who could be the first one there. Like that's <laughs> the way that people operated at. And so like when you operate at that level and it's not external, it's an, it's an internal motivation to be at a certain level. It was something that I identified with because I had to I had to do that in college to try to fight for my life, right? And then when I got to the league, you know, I'm a fifth round draft pick. I'm a receiver. They, they, they drafted a receiver in the first round. So I'm already coming in with gloves on. Like, I know that I'm going to have to fight for my opportunity. So when I come into it, I'm already knowing, like, okay, I, I got to trim the fat. So I'm looking at it like, this is what I got to do. Okay, I got I to gotta stand out. So I got to set the tempo moving between drills. I got to make sure I'm catching every ball. I got to make sure that you're not having to tell me information that has already been spoken. Yeah. I got to learn from other people's reps. I got I to gotta get the information and be able to process the information as fast as these guys that have been here five years because it doesn't matter that I'm a rookie. I'm being evaluated against this guy. So, so that's kind of the, the mindset that I had. But I learned that from being around these guys and seeing that, that level. And the, the crazy thing about it is um, a lot of things. But, <laughs> but as you get to training camp, right? Like, it's like everybody thinks they're making the team, right? No TAs. Oh, yeah. During the summer, like there's 78 guys out there. They're keeping 53. 45 of them are, are in the uniform. Eight of them are staying in, in, in sweats on the sideline, right? 45 guys are playing in the game. So, so as you get to training camp, 
you see everybody get tight. You see, not everybody, you see people get tight. You see people start to doubt. You see people when they get their opportunity, make that mistake, jump off sides, drop ball. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it, coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That next one or get it, get them in there. And it's, you're not ready, you know? Yeah. And so, so like, as you get to training camp, like all that stuff starts to, it's just weeding itself out. Guys are really cutting themselves as you're going through that process. It's like, you're not prepared. You're not ready. It's like, yeah, y- y- you've been preparing, but you've been preparing and everybody else is preparing like this. So we don't need you. Right. Yeah. And so like, as you, as you get to training camp, the, what the one thing the vets would always say my first couple of years that I always heard, and I heard it throughout my whole career is the more you can do the more you can do. Right. And so kind of tying that into my, my thing about going all in on you and, and, and being at your best, it's that you can't control the outcome, but you can influence it. Right. You can Very influence true. it with your actions, with your energy, with your habits, the things you do, right? That's how you influence it. And so when I heard that, like the more you can do, it's like, that's, yeah, the more you can do, you can influence that decision in your favor, right? Are you just a receiver? Are you just an X receiver, right? Like the weak side receiver, or are you an X, Y, and Z receiver? Do you know the Y spot when we go in in four receiver wide? Do you play on special teams? Do you just do one? Are you a backup? Do you just do special teams because they're asking you to? Or are you standing out on special teams? Are you on all special teams? Are you making an impact on special teams, right? The more you can do. Um, okay, so you're the fourth receiver. Are you just the fourth receiver over there salty on the sideline? Or are you a guy that's contributing to the guys that are in the game? Did you see that? Okay, no, no, someone throws out of the game. No, like, are you, like, what, what are you doing? So, like, all of those things are how you can influence your, your um, the, fa- the, the favor, in the decision in your favor. And you can, and when you got to the league, there's a couple of things. One, one of the things that you said um, that I always found funny, but it also sticks out because it's true, is when you get to the pros, not all pros are pros. Right. And the things you're hitting on, you have, it's not given to you, but you had an advantage from being a very cerebral player. To be a quarterback, you not only have to understand what your responsibility is, you have to understand where your weapons are, and you have to make defensive reads. Mm-hmm. And so you're mentally trained to be engaged in the game. But again, it comes down to your effort because there's nobody, having never been on a professional football team, but I, I feel pretty confident in knowing that there's no coach on that professional team that's going out there looking for the guys that say, hey, you should go do some more here. You should go do some more there. They're, they're professionals and their head's on the line because they got to focus. Their wide receiver group's got to be at the best. So to to see the other opportunities and add value, it's all going to come down to you having your mind open and looking for ways to contribute mm-hmm. and then you being willing to put in the work. Am I right? Right. Because that's all you can do to influence the decision in your favor. When you get to the games, okay, now we're on Sundays. That's all you can do to influence the outcome of that game, of that play in your favor, right? There's some matchups. You're matched up against Hall of Famer, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, the, the game plan, this is what your matchup is. This is what he does well. This is, you know, the opportunities we can take advantage of. And when you're playing these Hall of Famers type, type caliber players, there's very little minuses on them, right? It's a lot oh, yeah. of strengths. So are you going to go into the game knowing that, okay, well, this guy is just – remember watching this guy on Sundays when I was a kid, right? <laughs> like, like you, you, you have to be able to, okay, take this information and how I'm going to take this information and set myself up and influence the, the outcome in my favor. Right. So, okay, these, this guy's great at this, but this, so the things I would do is I'd find out what you didn't like, like, okay, this guy, he doesn't like to be blocked. Oh yeah. So if I block him extra all the way to the whistle on every play, he's going to get flustered. And when he gets flustered, He's, he's, an, he's, an, he's um, an emotional, unstable player, right? He's going to make bad decisions. That's what he's going to make his PI. So, okay, I'm, I'm on this guy's head all game, right? So I'm, not, I'm doing things in the first quarter that are setting me up for the third and the fourth quarter, right? You're playing a, a full game. So those are things that you have to be able to identify when you're, when you're going up against these guys. You're going up against the best players in the world, right? So it's like all you can do is can control what you can control and influence the things that you can in your favor, putting in the film time, making sure your nutrition's on point, getting the reps in practice, 
all the things that everybody does, but it's like, how do you give yourself that advantage when you know that you're already outmanned or the guy's just as good as you and okay, he's doing everything you're doing. So just flip the coin up and we're going to see who's going to win. Like, no, you, you want to do what you can. So just, it, you know, just think, taking control of that influence on whatever decision it is, rebounding from a challenge, attacking a goal, pivoting on a goal, um, in your lifestyle with business, whatever it is, it's like, you know, like after the trauma and you know, the, the shock and the stress, you know, of what happened, it's like, okay, what can I, what can I control? What can I do and influence it? Go all yeah. in. Right. And then you learn from whatever happens and then you adjust, you go back to the drawing board and attack it again. And so one thing I want to hit on before transitioning to the next chapter of the business uh, where you're at now because that's really sort of the the beginning of your next career that is going to outlive the realistic playing window most people have to compete at that level on Sundays. So, but one thing that I know you did because you shared with me, uh, we were friends is when you went in there, you separated yourself from other rookies and younger receivers and share about how you earned the respect of those older guys that were then willing to impart their through osmosis, sort of their years of, you know, cumulative knowledge and experience to give you those, because there are tips and tricks and reads right. that you can beat your head against the wall and finally learn it if you're still in the league at that time to learn it naturally or you get it right away. But they can short circuit that, but you have to earn mm. their ear or earn their time to say, hey, LA, this is what, this is what I do on that read. This is how I, like, how did you separate yourself to where they saw that you were worth investing into? Well, like you said, nobody's going to pull you aside and say, hey, you should be doing a little more over here. You mm-hmm. know, nobody's going to do that for you, especially when you're competing for a guy for his job, for his livelihood of how he supports his family. Right. Yeah. Nobody's going to do that. So the first key is you have to have the mindset that you're going to seek the knowledge. Right. It's kind of weird because you're competing against the guy and you're trying to prove you're better than him. But you have to be able to, to identify what he does well, what they rave about. And you have to be able to add those tools to your to your game. That's that was my approach. So what I would do is I would identify what everybody did well and not good, you know, the mistakes they made and be like, okay, don't do that. Or, okay, make sure that my eyes are here instead of there because I was looking over here too, you know, like, (laughs) you know, all that. But like, um, so, so from being dialed in to what guys were doing and the decisions they were making, how fast they were doing it, the things that the habits that they had, and I started to acquire those habits, right? I started to be an early guy getting there. I started to be a guy that stayed late. I would see certain the way certain things were executed and not necessarily that I even asked anybody, but I just started executing like that because that's what I worked on after practice before work on what I saw over and over and over again. Right. Just repetition, working it. Um, And then what happened is they saw me doing that. They saw me applying these things like, okay, I see you, Rook. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Rook goes hard, you know, like. (laughs) You know, you and you're competing against these guys and they see that, okay, this guy's no joke, right? And I'm like, I'm trying to prove myself at this time, right? So it's like, I don't care who you are, you get in the way, you're gonna get it. And if you don't get it, I'm gonna get the information, I'm gonna come back and give it to you. You know, like that was kind of my my approach. And so because I attacked guys like that, because I competed like that, what I, what happened was guys would start pulling me to the side or in, they'd see me in the meeting room, notepad out, taking notes right? They, they see that stuff and, and not every pro is a pro. Yeah. So the pros are seeing the other pros like, okay, what's he trying to do? So at first it's hazing, right? Yeah. Oh, what are you trying to do? Right on the field? It's, you know, stop going so hard. You know, it's like all that little stuff trying to just see where you're at, you know? And then they see like, okay, this guy's programmed. This guy's trying to do something. Oh, this guy is going to help us at the end of the day is what it develops into. I need to help him so that he can help us more. So once I proved that I was of value to the team, I think, and to the room, the receiver room, I think that's when guys more poured into me because then it was like, okay, let's get him even better to help us more. Because at the end of the day, it's all about winning right? in the NFL. That's, right. that's what it comes down to. Um, and going, transitioning from the NFL, now you're a business owner, husband, right? You have your family. And I think we should talk about um, – the project game elevated because to me, I think that's one of the coolest things to be able to use all your experience because not everyone's been a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. 
um, to have that pedigree and to come from a very cerebral understanding of the game, not just this freak gifted athlete that you talk to. And there's people, you know, you talk to them right. and the conversation's not their thing, right? <laughs> like, you know, certain things are your thing, but outside of that, they're just sort of, they they don't have the same impact. Um, but you being able to impart that knowledge and wisdom on the younger generation, I think, and to give back and fuel that passion is so really it's just cool and mm -hmm. it's the way to really i think achieve success is through giving and giving back so i want to i want to talk about sort of how you decided to go in and open start game elevated um and, and then talk about sort of goal setting from there okay yeah um so game elevated started because of what i kind of my journey and what i went through right if i wouldn't have Luckily for me, I've always kind of been in, interested in personal development outside mm -hmm. of sports. Um, and so luckily for me, like, I would always like be like personally developing as trying to be the best player I could, but just, you know, reading little things and, you know, doing little things on my own. And so through that, I think that's what helped me through that adversity when my back was against the wall. I had this other knowledge and these other skills that I didn't even know I was developing, right? Just through reading this information, exposing my stuff, myself to certain things. And so because I had that, because I was a quarterback, because I was coached a certain way as a quarterback in high school and groomed to be for the for to be able to, like, take in all that information, lead people, uh, make the adjustment, make the check. OK, you didn't play well. How are you how are, how are you going to get people to lead you or how are you going to lead people when you didn't play well? You know, yeah. and learning all those skills of how to be able to do that, that all helped me when I was in my adversity situation. And a lot of times as athletes. I see so many kids, especially here in San Diego County, that have the talent, the ability, the size, right? I go to a camp or, you know, just checking things out. And I'm like, oh, who's that kid? Yeah. Where's he going? And it's like, oh, nobody, nobody's offered him. Nobody knows who he is. And it's like, I mean, that's, there's a time in the window when, you know, you still have to kind of get on the map and things like that. But it's like a lot of people don't know what to focus on. And really, it's it's the mindset. In the mind mindset is the game is really my slogan, but it's being able to go to that place mentally to go all in on what you need to do to influence the decision that the thing kind of things we've been talking about. But it's like mentally to be able to go into that, like to be able to externally see that maybe you're not getting a fair shake. Maybe you're better than that person. Maybe you should have gotten an opportunity, but to still be able to mentally focus and, and still pour into yourself. Right. Because a lot of times it's easy to just kind of draw back or, well, I guess it doesn't matter anyway. Right. Or, yeah, I'm not going to do that extra because it's not even being noticed. Nobody's even saying anything. I'm not getting coached at practice. Um, so a lot of times we can kind of fall into that trap. And I think it's a kind of a natural reaction. I think sometimes you almost got to go into that to almost wake up and be like, wait, no, no, no. What am I doing here? This is what I need to be doing and make that adjustment. So um, with athletes, giving them the tools because to be able to play at a high level, you're not just physically training, watching film and eating and running. You're working with sports psychologists. You're working with um, vision therapists to enhance your, your hand-eye coordination. You're working with um, people that are specialists in the body that can sh that show you ways to be able to like activate yourself. Like it's great in the session that you can get my body ready, but it, on the field on Sunday, you're not going to be there. So I need to know how to do so I can feel like this. Yeah. So learning all this stuff that you learned through years of experience, my own, but all these guys I was around, that's like my thing is I'm like, like okay, what are you doing? How do you do that? Who's your person? And I'm getting the information. So it's like, okay, I have all this information. It's like athletically, you can only get so good. I'm like, I, the, the thing that's going to get you that opportunity for an athlete anyway, to get that opportunity for college football um, or to even put yourself in position to do that and show yourself at your best. I think it's key. If you're a college player, obviously you want to play at your highest level. You probably have NFL dreams, but, but in the NFL, that's what the best players are doing, right? That's what the, that's how the best players are thinking. And like when we watch things like the last dance, when you hear these little clips, Tom Brady or these little things, and it's like, yeah, it's like entertainment. Yeah, it's cool. It's like my mind goes somewhere else. And I'm like, I see it. Like that's the gene. Yeah. Like that's the mindset. Like that's, that's what a pro is. That's what we're talking about. And so it's like being able to like condition athletes' mindsets to have that pro mindset as a sixth grader, as an eighth grader, as a ninth grader, wherever you're at. But at some point in time, you're going to get to a point where your talent is not is going to be equal to somebody else or they're going to be better than you. 
and you're gonna be fighting for the same thing. So how are you gonna put yourself in the best position to, to take advantage of that? And so that's really what I wanna do with Game Elevated and what my, my passion is behind it because um, a lot of people just don't put themselves in the best position for that opportunity and they have the same dream that I had, you know? Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's so key. I would have loved to have somebody like you growing up, you know, and it makes me have those what-ifs like, wow, what could I have done? You know, and I, I love my life now. I, everything happens for a reason. But when you're talking, I'm going back in time thinking, oh, yeah, I didn't know what I would have been doing. And everyone has that, I don't want to say victim mentality, but it's really socially acceptable to play whatever card like, oh, well, Timmy got the job. I didn't get a fair shake, you know, and OK, sink that in, let it sit in. Remember how shitty that feels. What are you going to do? Right. Are you going to just pretend like it never happened and keep telling that story? Or are you going to use that as the fire to work on all the things that you just mentioned to make your body in the best physical, mental shape that you can be to get that opportunity or put in that extra effort when you don't think people are looking. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times I think people in general, but specifically athletes, feel they need to have that recognition and that reward and they start doubting themselves. Like, why am I putting in these upper reps? Coach already went home. Someone's there and someone's seeing it right? If you need that external gratification, yeah. but once you shift it a step further than that, which is really the key that you hit on at the beginning is you have to focus on you and what you can control and the commitment to yourself. Right. And when you hold yourself accountable, it, it cuts out the line for bullshit or excuses or, you know, LA's not here today. So, you know, I can have a cupcake, right? right? Like I, I think it's just so key. Um, Diving in now to execute that, you got to still clearly stay in shape, great shape. Right. Um, you got a lot to balance, and you're used to having routines from, you know, being in sports and being in the NFL. I want to talk to you sort of about what your routines are now to make sure that you're in your best shape to operate as a, you know, husband, father, business owner, all of these things. What What's your routine like in the morning, or do you have a set routine that you do during the day? Um. Yeah. Um, one thing we kind of skipped on is, you know, the businesses that we have here. We have um, five brick, brick and mortar stores. So that kind of ties in my routine. But um, so, yeah, as far as my routine, basically, I think my biggest thing is um, having a game plan for stress management. Right. Like because we have these five stores. I can have the best day planned. I could be operating at an all time high, but if there's a fire over here, mm -hmm. I got to figure out how to put that thing out between me and my wife. We got to figure out whether one of us are going to go, or are we going to call somebody to go or what's going to happen? But it's like, unless we make something happen, it's not going to happen. So as far as like my stress management, the, the thing, the things that I like to do is working out is a huge part of that. You know, obviously like, um, being in the NFL, it's a huge part of your lifestyle. But like for me, even bigger than like the results of physical, it's like the way you think, right? The way you operate, the way you feel, the vibrancy you have, like when you walk into a room, like you just, you, you, you bounce. People yeah. are like, okay, who's, all right. You know, people take note just because like I'm slugging through here, like who's this guy, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so like all of those added benefits to the, the working out and especially with me with the mindset thing i like to like challenge myself and compete with myself during workouts so that's personally for me but like i see these other benefits as far as like how i can show up better for my team because now i can it's not just for me it's for my team it's for my family it's for my wife right for everything so working out's a huge part not only physical but for those other reasons we just named um meditation's been a big thing for me mm -hmm. and um with that, it's more about um, being able to like kind of like the best way I can kind of put it is kind of being like stay tuned into my channel, right? Like, you know, if you get in the car and you like somebody's turning the dial, it's going like staticking between all these different things. You're getting little blips of conversations and it's like static. Mm -hmm. But it's like with the with the meditation, what it allows me to do, it's like as things happen throughout the day, that fire goes on or whatever. It's like, OK, yeah, the fire sucks. And it's like, yeah, but it's like, okay, this is what we need to do. Um, this is how we need to act. OK, well, there isn't a problem here, but. What about if we, you know, you're just more in tune to the things that you're, you're working on and what you're working toward. So that's been a big thing for me. For me, obviously, like personal growth is a big thing and just 
just acquiring new information because I think like the more information you're gaining, it like gives you more perspective through everything you go through. So everything from, you know, personally and then with business, you know, going to seminars and going to to learn how to teach people, learn how to be a better business owner, business, a better operator, a better um, motivator for your team, all that. Um, I'd say those are probably my biggest three. Um, but my overall like overarching habit is probably the way I think. And it's kind of like a never arrive mindset, right? Like, okay, things are going good, but it's like, we're going, we haven't, we have a destination. You're so not it's there like, yet. yeah, you're not like going to settle your feet and look to right and be like, whew, this is great. You yeah. know, like, you know, like, okay, so we haven't arrived and that's a good thing and a bad thing, you know, at certain times, you know, if you, if you're not aware of how to kind of calibrate and things like that, that's something that has been a challenge for me. But like, as far as like daily, it's like, okay, well, it's like a growth type of mindset, right? To, to every opportunity, something happens. And it's like, you know, with your team, a lot of times it's like, okay, there might be change that might direct directly how they operate and mm -hmm. they don't like it. And you have to give them the why to why it's beneficial for everybody. And more importantly, our client who's, which is the reason why we're here. And you have to be able to, to convey that and not be able to want to jump through your skin or, um, or want to defend and come back because you're in a different position, right? If we were on the street, maybe we'd talk different than in, in this here, we gotta, we gotta solve this situation, this problem. Yeah. So attacking it kind of with that never arrive kind of growth mindset, work out, meditate, learn, that's it. Yeah, no, I, you stay busy for sure. I mean, you, you juggle a lot. Um, personally, um, family wise and professionally, you know, we didn't even initially touch on the brick and mortar stores cause we're, we were focused on, on game elevated, but those things are something that you have to keep your eye on and your finger on the pulse of those, those operations every day. Cause it's not just you, it's other people depending right. on you for instruction to fix it and to solve problems, um, which you guys do a great deal of. And, you know, I, I wanted to have you on here not only as a friend, but I knew you had stuff to give back because you truly never settle. Like you are a forever student, whether you like school or not, I, you really are because every time we're together, you're learning something new. Like you come in, you always ask questions about anything you basically want to know about it. Like, and it's specifically if it's something that you can implement in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the greatest character traits that we see in successful people is that that hunger to learn to always want to focus on what i can do better or things i can implement like you say in your tool belt to then make the skills i thought were good even better or identify things that you lack you know and having that mindset of like never settling you know football didn't work at the quarterback i'm done to pivot go wide receiver set your goal still at being in the league and never settling on, on getting there um, and now never settling. That's why I have no, I, no doubt that you're going to be successful in these five ventures plus any of the other ventures that you guys decide to open up. Um, to wrap up, uh, just want to say thank you. Um, they can find you, Game Elevated, Legadun on AIG, watch his stuff. He also has a podcast. Um, and again, guys, take away. It's about mindset, getting rid of the noise, focus on what you can control, and, and keeping that mental strength there. Um, setting goals and being willing to put in the work, even when you don't see the rewards. And even when someone's not telling you, you're doing That's a good the job, key. you that know, the key. I, it's, it's just so important to, to know that stay the course. If you're making a change or you're trying to get somewhere and you're not seeing results right away, just know what you're doing is right. If you're moving forward and keep doing it, keep at it, never settle. Legendary LA, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. We'll see you soon.